No, we, we send radio and television to outer space. So we send Beavis and Butthead uh, into outer space. And any intelligent being that picks up Beavis and Butthead would wonder whether there's any intelligent life worth contact. You and I are on the way out there right now. Correct. And so I think, however, that any intelligent being uh, realizing that a planet with liquid water would be an ideal uh, arena to create the autocatalytic molecules called DNA uh, would be quite curious and have you know, regular reports. So this obelisk has been sending reports, yes. so I don't think we have to fear it. Uh, they would have been here causing havoc years before then. So then scientifically you would conclude that um, if, they, if they wanted to dispose of this in some unsavory manner, uh, that would have already occurred. Uh, that's right. And um, however, that's why I think that a permanent moon base would actually be a good idea. Not only would we know more about the origin of the moon, the solar system, solar storms, and so we had a huge solar storm just last month, you know. Oh, it was, that, it was incredible. It wiped out two satellites. Yeah, incredible. Yes, yeah, so, oh, I, uh, by the way, yes, we've only got a few moments, but the comment on the recent state of outrageous solar activity. I mean, you know, in a part of the cycle where there's no way this should be happening, I'm not saying it can't happen, but almost no way we should be getting super flares. Yeah, this is the biggest in 150 years. Yeah. Uh, you have to go back to 1850-something or other. Uh, that storm was so big, by the way, that telegraph keys, uh, telegraph lines activated all by themselves without any electricity. Uh, it actually induced electricity to send telegraph signals. Right. That's how powerful it was back then. Right. The storm luckily missed us. The sunspot was pointing the wrong direction. As the sun spins, this one sunspot was ejecting all of this uh, solar flares and radiation to the atmosphere, in, into outer space. Luckily, it was pointed the wrong way. And so we missed the bullet. If that bullet had hit, yes. it could have destroyed a good fraction of the satellites. Your TV screen would have been wiped out. So your radio transmission, the internet, probably all would have gone. God, the end of civilization as we know. And power lines would have been sur had, had had power surges and power lines. It would have been very messy had that solar flare hit us. And it just goes to show you that we don't know that much about the sun. Uh, sunspot cycles are 11 years, of course, but we're in the middle of the sunspot cycle. We were not due for another... Oh, uh, I know. I, I'm so fascinated, Professor, that I sit with the one-minute X-ray chart. During that time, I just sat with the one-minute X-ray chart up on my screen, and there were a couple of times I went right through the roof. I mean, as, as the vertical line would start and go shooting up past the high X category, mm -hmm. I started going, oh, my God. Um, this is really, really, really serious. And I was talking to a bunch of people, friends on ham radio about it, and... It was quite a time, and it may not be over. Any any guesses, Professor, what's going on with our son? Uh, well, this caught a lot of people by surprise. Mm. Uh, we categorize these by, by letter X, and so we give them numbers, and this was uh, almost off scale. And if you take a look at the last 150 years... It, was, uh, it actually was off scale. Yeah, uh, there, there only been like three other incidents that even came close, but the biggest one was 150 years ago. So this is definitely one of the, the big ones. And, uh, you know, it just grazed, it grazed us. And like I said, it knocked out the satellites, knocked out communications in certain areas. But do you think we could be entering a period of time with some strange, unnatural uh, output of the sun? In other words, I guess I'm asking, could it be perhaps not over yet? Well, it's not over yet. Uh, there was another mini storm just two weeks ago, another aftershock. Yes. And these uh, sunspots do rotate around the sun. Uh, you know, the sun flips its north pole and south pole every 11 years. Yes. And the flipping of the pole sends a shock wave. And the shock wave creates the aurora borealis and the southern lights and the northern lights every 11 years. But this was kind of unexpected because this should be a quiet time for the sun. And it just goes to show you that the sun has a lot of tricks that we didn't quite anticipate. Uh -huh. And not, not to mention that the Earth's magnetic field is also beginning. Well, you know, I meant to mention that, too. I, I just it gave 100% in the last century. Yeah, much more. And, and then they're saying it could accelerate, too, and uh, really accelerate. Yeah, if the Earth's magnetic field were to go kaput, and like I said, it's dropped 10% already just in the last century, it would be quite dangerous uh, to be lots of radiation coming down from the sun. We're almost talking the movie Core here. Uh, yeah, however, we are, we're not talking about destabilizing the, the center of the Earth. I know, but, but magnetic field down, sun up, not good. Uh, yeah, and also it could also mean that the poles may shift again. You know, the magnetic poles have shifted in the past. If you go to Hawaii and simply dig in the lava flows, 
you can actually see uh, the magnetic uh, pointing that was frozen in time many millions of years ago. Not also okay. possibly not good. Yeah, and so the poles could migrate, or the poles could gradually damp. Uh, this is all quite speculative. No one really knows for sure. But we do know that the Earth's magnetic field is dropping to a degree. And, uh, yeah, within centuries to millennia, maybe it'll go to zero. And on that note, Professor, we're out of time. I can go on forever. God, it's great to talk to you, and I'll look forward to doing it the next time. But we're out of time. We're out of time. Professor, thank okay. you. My pleasure. Anytime. <laughs> Good night. Okay. Here's Chris Bristol. She's got all just exactly the right words to take us out of here. See you next time or next weekend, whichever comes soon. I'm Mark Allen. Good night. Midnight in the desert. You'll be a star to cross the sky. This is my magical journey.